yesterday, it looks like Nick Sarwark surprised everyone with a test vote for digital balloting for the Libertarian National Convention. And as I understand it, it was kind of like he was trying to show off and, and you know, refute some of these challenges that people like me have raised saying, hey, man, there's no way that you can pull this together on short notice, the timeline you're talking about. And there's no way that you can do it reliably. There's no way you can do it in a way that we would have confidence in the vote, that you could have complete transparency and validation with, with every round of voting. Just no way. And it's not that it's not possible. Uh, it, technologically, it's actually relatively easy. Organizationally, getting the buy-in of a thousand national delegates, getting the organization around it that we need to hold any of our votes or convention activities with, in just in this short notice, no freaking way. You know, and if we were in Bubble Boy world or Hazmat Suit world, and it was like, well, we have to do this because this gathering is, we, we, you know, okay, well, next cycle will be. But even then, if we were in, we could meet in person. So why not meet in person? And I think you know, I, sh I shared that meme that we noticed during the show yesterday, George Washington, you know, going like this. We've, we fought a revolution during a smallpox pandemic. Y'all some bitches. And I'm thinking like more than ever, that applies to libertarians calling for an online convention by saying, well, we can't possibly figure out a way to meet in person. Like, oh my gosh, just absolutely ridiculous so cj it didn't go well did it no sir i i mean in all honesty i'm i like i've been saying for at least a year i want to be a delegate to go to the national convention and unfortunately we don't have our delegates picked until this saturday in pier at the long branch again reminder just a plug for our convention there uh but one of the things that disappointed me was the things that i was hearing him saying and his attitude towards the whole process, he went from uh, who is this guy to this guy's a dictator really quick within the matter of a test. And I will say that one of your delegates that has an Adam Kokesh uh, picture up on their account, like he supports you, had their spot hijacked. Yeah, yeah this is our friend, uh, Dr. Kenneth Brent Olson from California, uh, who has endorsed me and is a delegate representing California, is the vice chair of the California party. And that it, it, it's just that easy to hack. Uh, but to th the thing you said, that he couldn't even hold a test without maintaining a semblance of, I'm not a dictator, I'm a moderator of a big conversation. You said there was something about the, the, the hand raising issue. and. You know, I've I, I have not participated in in any big meetings online yet that actually required this. You know, when we do the presidential debates online, there's a moderator, and you know we're all respectful and kind of accountable. And it's pretty easy. When we do our weekly team conference calls, we've never had to do hand raising. But um, when when you have a thousand delegates in a contested convention where you are actually voting on bylaws and resolutions and party officers and presidential and vice presidential nominees you have to have a way for people to be able to come to the mic as happens in physical conventions where people are able to line up and i'm not saying this couldn't be done digitally but if you don't have a process you don't have a clear set of rules and guidelines established you don't have you know multiple people managing this process and watching everybody then you're going to have a, a bit of a cluster and it sounds like nick was challenged on this what exactly happened cj so first off uh i got a link that i was unable to click on to join uh and then so i found it on the party's youtube channel and it was just a giant Brady Bunch meets who wants to play dictator uh, session of people asking people who gets to talk to who and how and why and when and how do we credential this. And then somebody popped in and said, where do I vote for Bill Weld at? The problem <laughs> is that there was no way to maintain it. And at one point, the chair himself said, oh, if anybody wants to run for chair, I challenge you to try to do this, meaning he doesn't even think that his $75 an hour is, uh, he thinks it's above his, his $75 an hour request. It's a joke. 
So yeah, no, I've I've pulled out all support for any form of online convention for any level of libertarian party from the national down to my state here. And I won't participate. Well, about that, CJ, I think at the state level, at a smaller organization where most people know each other, uh, it, it could be pulled off. In a state like South Dakota, uh, you know, a virtual convention or remote voting doesn't present the same challenges just by the numbers that you start to get into, even with mid-sized states where you might have uh, 40 to 50 voting delegates at a convention. But were there, you had a brilliant post about this on Facebook. Were there any other points in there that, that you wanted to make we haven't covered? You know, Adam, the, the thing is, is that when we go down this slippery road into how it was done in our state, it wasn't done correctly. The process was rushed. It was out of the phobia of the crisis. And it was done in ways that if you go back to our deleg or our uh, committee meeting for that or our member meeting for the bylaw change to add the online, the strict conversation was, in the event of a national emergency, not because people are lazy or a technocracy is easier. And I think what we're seeing is the installation and shift of the Libertarian Party into a technocracy, which leads to idiocracy. And that's uh, the point. Yeah, no, I, I, I noticed your clever wording there. And the technocracy, you know, it's, it, it, it is a scary world that we're creeping into. So uh, well, let's just wrap up this segment. I, I don't want to get too down. This this is the inside baseball version of the rabbit hole here. But there will be a LNC, that's Libertarian National Committee meeting on Sunday. Oh, excuse me, on Saturday. And it is uh, open to observers from the public. And you can find all of the people on the LNC. There are essentially public officials of a public organization. Well, it, it's a private organization, it's a party, but it you know operates as, as, as a public business and they are accountable to the membership. You sign up at lp.org slash free membership. You can say you're a member of the Libertarian Party attending a national committee meeting and you know you, you uh, want your voice heard at least among your representatives there. Th this is a, a weird sudden turn to something super inside baseball i don't i don't normally even attend these meetings myself i sometimes look at the notes or clips afterwards but this is the time and, and I'll, I'll just wrap this up by telling you why this is so important this is the difference between having someone like me or jacob hornberger or john mcafee or dan berman or john mons or arvin Borja, a, a, a libertarian who's going to speak passionately to our principles and values every chance we get versus someone like Justin Amash, who can go on MSNBC for 10 minutes and say nothing libertarian. That's why he keeps getting mainstream media interviews, because he is the choice of the mainstream media. As soon as he gets the nomination, they'll turn on him. We have to make sure that this opportunity for 2020 is taken to present the American people with a real alternative and to get the legitimate libertarian message that's based on on these beautiful principles in front of the american people so right now yes it hinges on will the corrupt agents in the libertarian party get away with holding a digital vote or not and it, it this is something unfolding in real time we thought we had won this battle last saturday and and pretty decisively but it looks like we didn't uh we won we won the battle but the war continues. And of course, the Libertarian Party will always be subject to saboteurs and infiltrators and plants of all flavors. So stay frosty, my friends.